So I need this page out, and you should have your spelling words next to it. I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to get those spelling words out next to this page. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, get those spelling words out. They're, they're not later in the packet, they're earlier in the packet. Earlier in the packet. They're earlier in the packet. We haven't done as much with these. This is why we need to get this writing done. Also, because it's really important. I'm trying to make you guys the best writer you can see. Perfect. Everybody get those out. Put them next to your work. And let's, uh, I'm going to pass out some dice, but I'm going to tell you first what we're doing. Because it is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but it's also very similar. Ed, do you have a question? Aren't you going to still talk to people? What about math? Mm -hmm. I do still need to talk to some people about math, because some people still need to do theirs as well. You are correct. So I'll be doing that while we start our writing. Okay? So, we've done the rolling for a story before. But last time, we didn't use spelling words. So this time, you've got two rules, okay? Please put your, all of the chair legs on the ground, Abigail. Thank you. You guys, listen up. Once again, you're putting on your writing caps. Capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, spelling. This is especially important when you're writing a story. I need these stories to make sense, okay? I want the stories to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You still have the graphic organizer in here. Still right here, so you can make some notes for your intro. Three details in your body paragraph. Remember, each one of these is one paragraph. That is three paragraphs total. Three paragraphs total. Intro, three to five sentences. Body, which is your middle, three to five sentences. Conclusion, which is your end, three to five sentences. How many, how many sentences should I have in the first paragraph? How many sentences should I have in the second paragraph? How many sentences should I have in the third paragraph? So does that mean you only need three sentences for the whole thing? No. Good. No, so I don't want to see just three sentences for the whole thing. And I don't want to come around and just see one sentence in your intro either. And your intro shouldn't say something like, today I'm going to write about dogs. And then that's all I see. And then you skip down to the middle. No. Start it like a real story. Think about the stories you guys have been reading. That's not how they're introduced, is it? So beginning, middle, and end. Each paragraph should have three to five sentences. Okay. You're going to choose at least five spelling words. That means you could be using more than that, but you can't use less. And this, this is just to help you kind of get, get the ball rolling figuratively. Right? That's figurative language. But you're going to roll the dice. Whatever you land on will be your setting. Okay? So you have to work that into your story. So if you roll the one, you end up at South Fork in the wintertime. If you roll the two, you end up at a grocery store in the summertime. It could be any grocery store. It could be, it could be Bonds. It could be James Store. It could be whatever. It could be Walmart. Remember, if you roll a three, you'll end up at Mars in the future. If you roll a four, you'll end up in the jungle a hundred years ago. If you roll a five, you'll end up on the moon yesterday. And if you roll a six, you'll end up in a cave in springtime. For a character, remember, this is going to be your main character. Okay, hold on. Main character, you roll a one, you'll get a gorilla with red hair. That was a good question. What year was it hundred years ago? Hundred years ago. Well, let me ask you that question. If it's twenty twenty one now, I was is that hundred years ago? Are you sure about that, guys? I was. You guys weren't born yet. He's not a hundred. Okay, no calling out that. But a hundred years ago, what would a hundred years ago be? Yeah. Nineteen twenty one. That's correct. Nineteen twenty one. Go ahead. That would be a hundred years ago. Nineteen twenty one. Okay. So 
if you roll for your character. Remember, you got to work these people into your story. Just think of that. For your character, you roll a one, you'll end up with a gorilla with red hair. You roll a two, please stop. You'll, you'll end up with the best teacher ever. Oh, thank you. Uh, with, if you roll a three, you'll end up with a talking hamburger. With a four, you'll end up with a cat, with or without a hat. Your choice. Five, famous country singer. Your choice. Your famous country singer? I did not know. Please take that out of your mouth, Madeline. Number six, a terrible rapper. That's my favorite. Okay. No, terrible, really. A lot of people think he's one of the best. Okay, for the guys. For the plot, remember, plot's what happens in the story, right? For the plot, if you roll a one, you'll end up reversing an evil spell. you got to work that into the story. For number two, finding a mysterious diary. If you roll a three, looking for buried treasure. If you roll a four, taking a big math test. Roll a five, finding a way out of a haunted house. And number six, riding a wild unicorn. So, let me give you an example. Let's try this out. Please stop clapping. Okay, please don't call out. Next time you're getting a red point, I'm calling out. I appreciate you have your hand up. But you can't call out and have your hand up at the same time. It doesn't make sense. So hold on. We're going to roll and see what I end up getting, okay? I got a three for the first one, which means I'm going to be on Mars in the future. Okay, for the second one, I got five, a famous country singer. And then for the last one, I got four, taking a big math test. So that would be what I'd have to write about. Maybe I'll do it. Should I write one? I'll write one. I'll write one too. Okay, now, question. An example. I want to go to the stop work with a terrible rapper riding a wild unicorn over the lake. Is that what you hope that you get, but you gotta roll it? Right, I don't know. It's completely different. I was gonna get a mask. Yes. Mine is a pure. Go ahead, they're right over there. Okay. So go with what you roll, because that makes it more fun. Jeff, question. Did I give you an answer? Guys, please stop talking. If next time it's a red point. Okay. Why did we get the same number three times in a row? Then that's what you have to work with. You gotta do whatever you get. You might end up with three threes. This is going to you bars in the future, a talking hamburger, looking for buried treasure. <laughs> right? So have fun with it, guys. Did I already give you one? No, here we go. Oh, just remember, i got to get my dice back when we're done. Yes. And at the very end, the treasure is lots of pickles. Could be. You tell me. Okay, guys, let's get started. And I will pull the spelling words up on the board, too, so you guys can see them there as well. But everybody should have them in front of their, in front of their faces. There we are. And for fun, I will write one as well. Okay. Yes, question. I got a gorilla with a red hair. Exactly what I wanted. Good, I'm glad to hear that. I got three twice. Okay, guys, good. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter if you get the same one twice. I don't want wrong. Guys, focus. So, listen. While you are working on this, there should be no talking. I know it's going to be funny. But at the end, we can share our stories, okay? That means you actually have to finish the stories, though, so you can share them. But I don't want to hear what you got until you actually write your story, okay? Okay. Class, class. Okay. So once again, really quickly, guys, please stop talking. I got, my setting was Mars in the future, 
character was famous country singer. Plot involved taking a big math test. Okay, those are what I rolled, right? So what I did was I didn't use the graphic organizer because I typed my. So what I had instead was I went ahead and decided on a country singer. I chose Miranda Lambert. Oops. I just ran over on Mars, right? Uh, I made it, um, actually, I wrote 100 there, but I actually made it 1,000 years in the future. I made it 1,000 years in the future, which meant the date was 3,021 instead of 2,021. And taking a big math test. Okay, I chose the spelling word whisk, phone, photograph, theater, hole, hush, and graph. Those are the ones I chose. Matt, right, I have a question. On your first two, I got the one under, and on your last one, I got the one above it. Okay, good. So now, you see how I have three paragraphs? Do you see how they're indented, just like your paragraph sheets look? They're indented. This is how they should look. Okay? Something like this. So, but of course, I type mine in handwriting. You guys don't need to be subjected to that type of horror. Okay. So I wrote. As I started, in the faraway future, Miranda Lambert sat for the biggest math test of her life. She had been whisked away to Mars from the Nashville Theater a thousand years ago while she was playing a show. Now, she was in her 30th year of high school. School lasts forever at Mars at 321. And today was test day. As Miranda stared at her math test, she thought about Earth. She missed her cell phone, her dog, and her truck. Lucky for her, she kept a photograph of her previous life with her at all times. Please don't do that. Really, Ian? That's the right point. It's very disruptive. And, guys, come on. I don't know where we are today, but it kind of seems like we're all in uh, La La Land or something. Well, that's not a good thing. Okay. Let's see. Like of her, she kept a photograph of her previous life with her at all times. And whenever she missed home, she would look at the photograph and feel better. Today, though, she could only think about how much she missed being out of high school. The photograph wasn't helping. Miranda sighed loudly to herself as she tried to grasp the slope of a difficult equation. Her teacher, a big green alien named Mr. Gurgogoff, told her to hush. She sighed softly again two times and continued working. She closed her eyes, sighed quietly a fourth time, and finally figured out how to solve the problem. Once she was done with the test, she felt a whole lot better. Maybe Morris wasn't so bad after all. That's it. That's the story. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that exciting, but it worked. Yeah. Well, one, the reason everybody in Lago Land is probably because they would rather daydream than listen to any sentence. Then listen to any sentence. Well, that's too bad because you're in school. Two. This, this actually could reference a game that I'm on YouTube. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's called Sharks on Mars. And the fact okay. that having a giant space station with space janitors and janitors is a lot more better than school on Mars. I'm sure, it probably is. But those are the things I rolled. That's how the story came about. Go ahead. Melly. Can I tell you what I wrote so far? No, not yet. So, can I tell you what I wrote for my story? Okay, so those who are finished, you're going to read your stories. I can also read them. Yeah, I, can. I can't read yours? <laughs> what? It's good to share. Sally, yeah. so, you can read yours first. But guys, you guys, we need to follow the same rules. We do not speak over each other. Okay, go ahead. Read us your story. Tell us what you got first. The title of the story, The Burger and the Unicorn. Oh, so clearly you got the unicorn and the top of the camera. Where was your setting? In a cave in spring. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go, here we go. There once was a little burger, and he was just getting grilled. He felt <laughs> nice and toasty with a couple of white sesame seeds. 
He saw meat getting shoved into a grinder and his friend fish getting dipped whole in liquid that just got whisked. So he got away. It took him 15 springs to get to a cave. This is a secret cave of a unicorn. Good. He saw a unicorn. Oh yes, that party did. <laughs> and he tried to ride it. Yes, he did. And tried and tried, but the unicorn wouldn't, just couldn't be ridden. But the next day, the unicorn let the paddy ride it. Let the paddy ride it. The unicorn said, hush, and the paddy, paddy pickle rode, rode the unicorn to the theater. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Sullen. So we picked out some of the videos. Right? Bless you, bless you. That was very good. I also like uh, that you did refer to the hamburger as a patty. Uh, your hamburger <laughs> could have been patty as well. Bless you. And that would work. Very good. Very good. Because it was bless you. Wow. I should have went with patty corn. Patty corn. Well, I liked what you did do. That was good. That was a good story. Uh, do you have a question, Ed? Are you done with yours? Okay, you want three hits. Come on, up and tell us what you got. What was your setting? And um, what was your character? A gorilla with red hair. And what was uh, what was your plot? Or what is part of your plot? A mysterious thing. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, in a cave, in the time, a red haired gorilla <laughs> saw a mysterious diary. He pulled out his phone and sent a picture to his friend, and his friend came over and said, where is it? So he showed it him where it is, so he... I can't read this. Yes, you can. Keep going. You want me to finish it for you? No. He showed his friend to the research and uh, he almost fell on a kick full of spikes. Oh, wow. A whole pit. A whole pit. A whole pit of spikes. He said, oh no, I just wanted to shut up. Well, that's not very nice. Shut. Yes, I know. Shut is one of our words. He's right. Yeah, huh. And then the other girl said, I wish you could help me. Oh, sorry. And Wake up a little bit. Help him help so they let him to look into one of them so they took a big while of the end. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Good. I heard some good spelling words in there. Sally, do you have a question? Yes. Could you teach me how to um, record videos on my laptop? This so is can, not what we so are talking about. So I can record it, about. reading this, and post this on the school website. You want to post your story on the school website? Yeah. I want to do That's that part too. of this video. Okay, guys. Please stop talking okay. out. Okay. Who else finished the story today? Um, yeah, Ariana, you want me to read yours? You don't want to share it? Well, everybody wants to hear it. Respect for privacy. So I should stop calling out. And in class, part of being in class is also sharing with your classmates. One day, you guys will end up in a public speaking class where you will have no other option other than to get up and share. So, this is good practice to do it now. What I would say. Because either way, I or one of your classmates will read it. Sure you don't want to share. I said I'd read it. Okay. You sure you don't want me to do it? Tell us, that's the right point. I've asked you several times to stop speaking out. Okay? If she says no, I will read it separately, but I would love to hear it. I'm sure everybody else will as well. 
Okay. Who else finished? Tell them you finish yours? Mm -hmm. You want to read it? You don't want to read your story either? Nah, I didn't think that two people were in. Uh, Jack, what about you? But you're close. How much more do you have? Four lines on last page. That's quite a bit of story. All right. Well, that means that tomorrow uh, we will have some other people read. Now, again, like I said, I would like to have more people share. Okay, it's, it's very good practice for you to get up and share. Nobody's gonna make fun of you. We all love hearing it. Now, that's the right point now. I've asked you to stop speaking out several times as well. We're going to roll today, guys. Who else wants one? That is a rhetorical question. You've got to answer that. Plus, nobody here should want one. Okay. So that means tomorrow, for anybody who, who's done with their story tomorrow, I'll get a few more readers. I'm going to wait. You're done today, aren't you? You want to read your story to us? How are you going back to the intro? I thought you were done. Ah, see, you were not done. Okay, don't tell me you're done, guys, when you're not done. It's not very honest. Also, guys, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to write the intro after you have wrote it, after you have written the rest of the story. Maybe that kind of comes first. Now, if you need to go back and add things, please do. But yeah, question. Uh, yeah. First, you you just said rhetorical. 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 Remember, guys, I told you guys what that meant. But a rhetorical question means I don't need an answer to it. It just means I'm asking a question that you know the answer to. And you know what I'm trying to say, but I don't really need an answer. So like if I say something like, who else wants red for it? I don't want to hear anybody say, I do, or no, I don't, or no, we no. That's a rhetorical question. Or, what should we be doing right now? Should we be talking right now? That's a rhetorical question. <coughs> you guys know the answer to that, right? Jack. Can you what? Your picture to go with your story? Yes. So, question. Um, that means like fake. You don't want an answer to it. It's not fake. It doesn't mean fake. It's a real question, but it means it's a question that you don't really have to answer because you already know the answer. What I'm doing is I'm trying to make a point by saying it. I'm sure your parents do this sometimes too. Yeah. Uh, let's do it tomorrow. So, it is now 11.35. Some of you are not done. Now listen, tomorrow is the last day you have to work on this story for this week. So, if you need to bring it home with you tonight, please do. You will have some time tomorrow, though. But listen, guys, I also need you to make sure that the penguin story is done. Yeah. Your close reading of the penguin. Okay? If that's not done, you're going to want to take this home with you to finish it. Yes, my love? I finished. You finished. Do you want to share it really quickly? You read it. You want me to read it? Okay. Thank you, Madeline. I will gladly read it. Let's see if we can figure out what her... Well, you tell me. What was your setting? Okay, my setting was on the ground of 130 days. Awesome. Terrible rappers looking for very trick. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, the title is I Hope This Isn't Confusing. I thought it was going to be confusing. That's an interesting title by Madeline. One time, a hundred years ago, there was this terrible rapper who was looking for buried treasure in the jungle. You would think, why would a rapper need to look for treasure? To get his rapping skills back, he was a great rapper until, oh, until Evil Witch. So when he finds the treasure, he'll get his rapping skills back, and someone, <laughs> and someone, Shut the box. Yeah. Oh, okay. The treasure was nowhere to be seen. After some time, 
he decided to look at some photographs. Probably a good idea. The bad part about that was they were too dark to see what they looked like. So he took his phone and turned up the brightness. He realized that it was not a human boy. It was a... No, it was not a normal boy. Oh, normal boy. It was... That makes way more sense than human boy. It was a magic box. At the end, he finally got his voice back. So he's good at rapping and his friend rapped with him. And they went on stage and were at some, and, and were awesome. Everybody was there and loved it. At the end, they were all happy and went on stage every chance they got. The end. You know what you could have ended? You could have thrown, what word you could have thrown in that last part there? Theater. They're on stage at the theater. Uh, uh, good. But you see what we have here? She did have a very classic beginning, middle, and end, right? Beginning, she introduces the character, the bad rapper, she explains why he's a bad rapper. Middle, he goes to get back his voice, right? He's got the plot going right there, and it's all resolved. He gets back his voice. Now he's a good rapper again. Very good, thank you for sharing. David. Um, I'm not the queen, and community. Yes. And... Just now? If you go up to Miss Michelle, I think she's got a little box. So where did you think go with? With her hand, probably. Do you want to read it first, then you go get a box for two? I'm going to go ahead. Do you want me to read it while you're gone? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, when you come back, tell it. Well, why, if you're going to tell us, you should just read it. Oh, I see. I didn't even know that there were rappers in 1921, so we learned something new today. Weren't there kid rappers? Not in 1921. Rappers are going to think. Very early. You can't, it might be yours. I can't write it with someone. I definitely got a little bit. Tell me, you don't want to share your story? Are you sure? You guys want to tell me about your stories, but you don't want to share them. Are you ready to share yours? You want me to read it? I don't want to share yours. Oh, yeah. It's a weird story. Yeah, but they're all weird stories. They didn't like my story. That's what makes it a good story. That's right. They didn't like my story because it involves taking a mask. And I'm, I'm back. It wasn't exciting. I'm back. I'm back. Class, class. Yes, yes. Guys, stop squeaking out, please. That goes for everybody. Tell us. I remember my two questions. First, can I go look this out with mine? And. I don't think that one's yours either. Okay, now that I'm writing that. But the second thing is my question why my story is even weirder than Dr. Weltman's. Is your story yeah, of course you can tell your story. Mine's about a hamburger who Why are you telling us what it's about when you already read it to us? We know what it's about. We liked it. Everybody laughed. It was funny. Okay. Here we go. Is this yours? Who wrote a story? This had to have been a couple weeks ago. About a toy named Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend I got a fish. I named him Jeffrey. He likes to swim a lot. We were very tired. We played. Then we went to sleep. Then we woke up. We watched fireworks. We watched football. We ate watermelon. Nobody remembers this story? Uh, I'm going to say Andrew. I thought it was the Jeffrey. The Jeffrey. But he said it wasn't him. So oh, okay. I don't know. I think it's a mystery. Okay. <laughs> Well, He's serious diary. He's been obsessed with the name Jeffrey. He has been obsessed with the name Jeffrey. Yeah. Well, Valid. Yeah. Okay, imagine. Or Kate is with my mother's puppy name and then writing a wild name. That'd be a good one. Uh, who else are we have? Ariana. You do want to share it. Are you going to come up? I thought Kate was here. Okay, I'm going to read Taylor's, and then do you want me to read yours? Okay, I'm going to read Taylor's first. Wait. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, 
All right, Kayla. What was no, what's your question? That's okay. Were there a such thing as records in 1987? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But not 1921. Okay. So, uh, first thing, Tamba, what was your setting? Yeah, what was your set? Okay, and what was your character? A cat with or without a hat. And then what was your plot? Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so you got a math test too. Okay, so the story is the cat who had a math test. By Tabernacle. Once upon a time, there was a cat with a hat who took a math test on a moon who sneezed constantly. The cat took a huge, huge math test yesterday. The cat took a math test on his white phone. I do not recommend taking a math test on your phone. <laughs> on the fourth question, the cat had the cat oh, had to skip it and come back to it. He did not know what the phrase was. Oh, that's good. When he came back to it, he did not see it nowhere. Oh, it should be anywhere. You should, it should be anywhere. But you did use the word nowhere, which is one of our spellings. So he got an F minus on the test. I thought it didn't even say He must have done really bad. Okay, good job. Thank you. Okay, next one. Ariana, what is yours? What, what was your aesthetic? And who is your character? A talking hamburger. And then what was your plot? Okay, well, we have a few of us had taken a math test. This is called 100 Years Ago in the Jungle by Ariana. Once upon a time, I was in a jungle 100 years ago. It was scary. And I was so scared that I started to wish for a phone to call for help. 100 years ago in the jungle, there were talking hamburgers, and the fourth and fifth were nice. Next, I had a math test that slipped with me, that slipped with me through the, oh, through the portal. I see how you got there. That slipped with you, the math test slipped with you through the portal, and to the hamburgers, the hamburgers wanted to help me. Then when I was down, I took a photograph of them, and then Wait, them and me, so we would always remember each other. Good. Didn't that sound fun? The hamburgers were so much fun. Also, the hamburgers were really nice. Oh, good. They help you pass the math test. That's what I would ask. Tell me whether or not they actually help you pass that math test like they went you through the portal. <laughs> good job. I like the portal. <coughs> Very good. Jack. Yeah. Yes? You don't want to read it? Only read this page, though. Oh, no, we gotta read the whole story. No. You gotta read the whole story. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Think about that. Mom! Really? That's okay. I have bad spelling. I don't know if I'm hearing the text on. They don't have opposable thumbs. So they can't write. Opposable thumbs. Most cats do not have thumbs, some cats do. Well, no. No animals can. So, they, we, these are. And the, uh, <laughs> Magic. This is, this is, this is, but these are fake stories. Magic. They're not real. They're, They're fictional. fictional. That's right. They're fictional. These are fantasy. Where did that walk? Okay. Oh, it's Guys. Uh, what was your setting? Uh, grocery store? Yeah, and the cat is a hat. What was your plot? Finding a way out. Okay, well that makes sense because it's all in the title too. It says, cat with a hat in the summertime in the grocery store and a haunted house. And the cat is not scared of anything. Good to know. The fearless cat. There once was a cat with a hat. He was hungry, so he went to the grocery store to get some fish pie. Yum. So we got to the grocery store and got his fish pie. Then a big haunted house fell through fell through the ceiling and everybody was screaming outside the cat. <laughs> oh, beside the cat. So the cat peeked inside and walked in. He went up the stairs 
and a ghost tried to scare him, but the cat just punched the ghost somehow. <laughs> the only fear the cat had is dogs. And guess what? There was a dog. <laughs> the cat ran. He slammed into the door, but it was locked. So were the windows. So he looked around the house for one hour, but he found nothing besides a teddy bear with one eye. <laughs> and so he kept searching, then found a second bunker. Wait, a what? A secret bunker in the house. The reason he found it was he fell into the ground. It hurt. And down there, it was a skeleton king of the castle, and he said nothing because he's dead. That's why he's a skeleton. <laughs> but in the skeleton's hand was a sledgehammer. So he grabbed it and slammed it into the neck to the door and ran and never got his food. So he started, so he started, started, but are the, oh, cats. He starved, I think. He's starved, but cats have nine lives, so he's still alive. But he got, that's good. But he, but he got TNT and blew up the house. And was unfriendly for one, for one month. But when he was nice, he bought a huge cake. Then became a farmer and loved it. It was peaceful, it was a peaceful job. And he became a good swimmer. He was a hard worker for this job. Yeah. I have to say, in the few stories that I've heard, you guys have an amazing <laughs> imagination. That was good. I know. It was true. Yeah. That was very good. Tell us. Two things. Um, I would escape because I'm amazing at escape rooms. Okay. <laughs> and. <laughs> good to know. Okay. The second Bragging. thing is. All right. Right. Here's boy, I would have added. <laughs> um, the cat got distracted by a ball of yarn and fell down the stairs <laughs> into an evil bulldog. See, this is why we should write another story together. Okay, Madeline. Okay, good. You can just break the window. Could just break the. He couldn't break the window. He couldn't it's a break the window. Good, I think that's what he wanted you to do with picture in your mind. That's what's it's good to where you do. Seba. Nice. Well, after he got the sledgehammer. He broke it over. But he had to have it first. Remember, yeah. there's a whole series that happened before that. I mean, he had to make the story long. This is how it works, guys. This is what happened. This is why we should run another one together. Okay. But, good job, guys. And I appreciate those of you who are willing to share. Everybody's stories were really amusing. Very amusing. Who else wants to share? Yeah, I hope you want to. Sorry, are you done with yours? Um, and then you want to share? I'm going. Do you want to share yours? No. Do you want me to read yours? No. You don't want to share? Okay, so. I was going to say two things again. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, a cat couldn't always be super strong. Okay, guys, we're stuck but on the capture. Move on, move on. Wood and move on, move on, move on. Um, he could yeah, have what you could have had to please him. Schmidt, are you done? Oh. And do you want to read or do you want me to read? It's my story. It is his story. Okay, guys. <laughs> All right, take me. Right. Turn your body all the way around. Please put that hat away. Hey, I'm talking to you. Turn your body all the way around. On your chair. That's okay. I don't read that. Part. Okay, so Schmidt, what's your setting? Um, my setting was um, South Fork in the winter time. South Fork in the winter time. And what's your character? Um, a cat. In a hat. In a hat. 
And what's your plot? Um, taking a big map. Okay, that seems appropriate for Southport. Okay. <laughs> Title is A Cat at School by Chloe Schmidt. Once upon a time, there was a talking cat that was in fourth grade. He went to South Fork School in the wintertime. The teacher that worked there at South Fork School would teach the cat in the wintertime. On Monday, we were working the whole fraction and ELA. I thought the whole... What did you say? Oh, working on whole fractions and ELA. I thought the whole fractions were fun. After school, me and my mom went to the movie theater. It was fun. After a couple days, it was Friday, and my teacher told me that I had to do a big math test for fifth grade. But I am only in fourth grade. While I was doing my big fat math test, I got stuck on one and I had to think for a while. I started to meow to myself and my teacher said hush to me. And in my head I said, that's just rude. I got past the one that I was stuck on and I was proud of myself so far. I had finally finished my math test. I got an A+. Plus. My teacher was proud of me and I was proud of myself too. So after we talked, we had cupcakes and party. <laughs> the end. I'm assuming the cupcakes were made of fish. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, class. So let's please take a seat. Thank you. Okay, question. A plus and an F minus. Just so you guys know, you can't actually get an F minus. There's nothing lower than an F. So that's really bad. Jess, can we stop talking? You don't want to read it? You want me to read it? Why not? You don't want to share? So what about you? You want yours? Not yet. Okay. Now the question. I got a question. Where double negative make a make a positive? Nope. Nope. Now it's gonna get a little more complicated when you actually get to to using those in math. <laughs> but when it comes up, when it comes to our language, no, because we don't really use double negatives. Those are not grammatically like correct. Like there's two stuff that I like each other. No, they don't cancel each other out. However. In math, sometimes this is where it gets complicated, but we, you're not quite there yet with that. But yeah, sometimes two negatives might turn into a positive. But no, two stop, two stop signs don't mean you can do double. No. And a double negative in, in, in language would be something like saying, we don't not need to do that. Don't stop. Do and I said, um, nine dollars? You mean the cash one? Um, the owner. The owner of the cat. Okay. Oh, I got you. Owner. Hey, Mel, please stop speaking out. Guys, you're really off today. Okay. So. Good job, guys. Your stories are getting a lot better. They're making a lot more sense. You got some good beginnings in those of them. And let me see a show of hands of those who liked doing the rolling for the plots and the characters. Who liked doing that? Some of you like doing it? Good. Who likes writing without it better? No? Yeah, mixed, mixed feelings? It looks like most of you like it though, so maybe we'll keep doing that just for fun. <laughs> We'll switch them up though. They won't always do the same thing. Can you stop talking out? If you have somebody to say you need to raise your hand. That's how we do it. Okay, but I need you guys to sit down. I know I see that, but you're also distracting people around you. Thank you. Yes, Schmidt. Um, I don't really do like Good. So the prompts help you, those are called prompts. So that's one reason I did it, was to try to make it a little more fun, but also to give you guys something to work from, so you don't have to think so much about. Do you notice how many more of you actually got the story done in one day? That's because you had a little bit to work from, right? All of you worked in some good spelling words. Most of them were used correctly. Yes. However, I did see some spelling errors, guys. Uh, no, I saw spelling errors on everyone, but 
I thought spelling errors are spelling words. Those are the things you have to make sure are spelled correctly. They're right in front of you. I should not see those spelled out. Those should be the things that are spelled completely correctly. No. I thought everybody was just creative. Everybody is very creative. I agree with you. Damn it. Oh, I don't you don't know how to do what? Spell question? Yeah, I can no, you're fine. Uh, is that your little box for your... Good. It's like two pairs of the summary. So, we could get rid of everything else except for the hamburger. We can't get rid of patty pickle. You like to keep... You want the hamburger to stay. Yeah, we'll get rid of yeah. We'll probably have different things every time, guys. Okay. If you're going to mind working that one.